All right, guys, how's it going? Welcome back to another video on the channel. Today, we're making another top 10 ranking, and you guys seem to really like the one that I made a couple days ago talking about the top 10 Montreal Canadiens prospects. So today, we're doing something really similar, only this time talking about the Red Wings and who I feel their top 10 prospects are heading into next season. You know, I think it's a really interesting debate after everything Steve Eiserman has done to construct this team and build a strong foundation. They still have a really good prospect pool, and with players coming in, they're really going to make a difference on that roster next season. With that, if you guys disagree or agree with my list, make sure you comment down below what you think. Subscribe to the channel if you're new around here, guys. Thank you guys so much for all the support on the recent videos. It means a lot to me. Like the video, and without further ado, let's actually get right into the number 10 pick. So at number 10, I have gone with Theodore Niederbach of the SHL. This guy last year played on Fralunda, and this year he'll be moving over to Rogel BK. Let's take a look at his stats really quickly. So this guy here on Sweden on the U20 World Junior Championships, he got four points in seven games played, one goal, three assists. On Fralunda, he got 16 points in 51 games played, nine goals, seven assists. And in the playoffs that year, he got three points in nine games, played one goal and two assists. So decent numbers, nothing too eye-popping, obviously. But I see this guy as more of a defensive forward. He's really responsible. He's a hard worker. And he has a really heightened vision on the ice as well. So this guy is a really solid player. 2020 second round draft pick by the Red Wings. And a great player to start off this list. Now, next up at number nine, we have Cross Hannes of the Portland Winterhawks in the WHL. When I think of this guy, I think of a gifted, creative puck handler. He's really good at finding his guys behind the net, at creating slot opportunities. Honestly, just a really creative player, and his play really showed that on the Portland Winterhawks this year, where he got 86 points in 63 games played, 26 goals, and 60 assists. You can see that this guy's a really big playmaker. He continued that on the playoffs where he got nine points in 11 games played, five goals, four assists. Honestly, this guy has it all. A really good pick by Stevie Eiserman, picking him in the second round of the 2020 NHL Draft. And yeah, just a player that I think is really deserving of this number nine pick here on this list. Now, next up on this list at number eight, we have Carter Mazur. And this guy, he's been playing on the University of Denver. And this past season, he got 38 points in 41 games played in the NCAA. That's almost point per game. That's really solid. 14 goals, 24 assists. And on the USA U20 national team for the World Junior Championships, he managed to put up seven points in five games played last season. Five goals, two assists. This guy's really consistent, a great scorer. And this guy, you know, he was drafted in the third round. A pretty big steal, if you ask me, for a guy that's going almost point per game in the NCAA. He's six foot, he's a left winger, 170 pounds, he shoots right. And honestly, man, I just have nothing bad to say about this player. He's going number eight on my list. At number seven, and this was a tricky one, I have Elmer Soderblom. Swedish player playing in the Grand Rapids Griffins of the AHL next season. Last year, he played on Fralunda in the SHL, and this guy put up some pretty decent numbers. He got 33 points in 52 games played, 21 goals, 12 assists. That's really good. And ultimately, man, this guy, he has it all. He's six foot eight, 249 pounds, and he's a winger. That is absolutely nuts. This guy's huge, and I really expect this guy to possibly be brought up to the Red Wings at some point next season if he's able to do well at the AHL level, which I'm pretty sure he will be able to do. I was contemplating whether or not to put him a bit higher, but I have my reasoning, and I'll get into that in just a moment. But yes, Elmer Soderblom, a really exciting player, six foot eight winger, and he can score goals. He's going number seven on my list. So at number six now, I have William Wallander. And the reason I put Wallander over top of Soderblom is because of the fact that Wallander is a defenseman. And I feel like since I've only mentioned forwards so far on this list, I feel like Wallander has a little bit more value and just a bit of an edge over top of all the names that I've mentioned so far. So that's why he's taking this number six spot. On the Rogel BK team in the SHL this year, he got 19 points in 47 games played, four goals, 15 assists. That's pretty good. He was a plus six as well. And ultimately, man, this guy just towers over his competition. He's another tall player. He's six foot four. He's only 190 pounds though, but still, man, he's huge. And ultimately, there's plenty of room for him to fill in that frame. You know, he's still only 20 years old. He has tons of time. And I could really expect this guy to turn into an absolute monster when he gets to his peak. Because despite his height, so many people have said that he might be the most technically skilled skater among all defensemen in the 2020 NHL draft. He was selected 32nd overall by Eiserman. Pretty high pick, so they invested pretty high in him. And ultimately, I really think this has the possibility to pay off in a couple of years' time. So Wallander has taken my number six spot. 
Starting off the top five now, I have Sebastian Koss. And trust me, a goaltender wouldn't be touching the top five if he wasn't some sort of prodigy to be the next goaltender of the future for this franchise. But trust me, I think we might be looking at it right here. I mean, the numbers speak for themselves on the Edmonton Oil Kings. His stats are absolutely ridiculous. He has 0 0.913 in 2022, 0.941. 0.921 on Canada's U20 team. He got a 0.917. I mean, this guy, he just stands on his head. He's so consistent. And I mean, if you look at his height too, he's six foot six, 209. Guys, he fills the net. And he's only 19 years old as well. He's playing in the AHL next year on the Grand Rapids Griffins, which is going to give him some really good development. And ultimately, man, Stevie Y really put his faith in this goaltender, drafting him 15th overall in last year's draft. That is really high for a goaltender. So he must really believe in this player if he's going to take him that high. So, I mean, I'm all for it. Stevie Y he makes good decisions. And Sebastian Costa rightfully deserves that number five spot on this list here. Now at number four, I have decided to go with Marco Casper, the eighth overall pick in the 2022 NHL draft. And don't get me wrong, I think Casper is a really good talent, but I do feel like the Red Wings could have picked a better player at number eight. Guys like Matthew Savoy and even Joaquin Kemmel were still on the board, but I mean, regardless, I'll take Marco Casper. And uh, I honestly think that this guy, he could develop into one of the better players in this draft. He's physical and capable along the boards. Even in terms of manipulation, he recognizes the angle of defenders coming in at him and knows how to beat them and escape them. He passes to the right areas and he knows the next logical play in the offensive progression. Honestly, man, this guy, he has such a complete game and he's playing with men already. This year on Rogel BK in Sweden, he managed to put up 11 points in 46 games played as an 18 year old. That's really solid and he's only gonna go up from here. So I'm really excited about Marco Casper. Sure, I'm sure they could have gotten a little bit better of a selection with that eighth overall pick, but regardless, I mean, I wouldn't be putting him this high for no reason. So Marco Casper, rightfully so, is getting that number four overall pick here. Now, next up at number three, I have Albert Johansson, another Swedish player. This guy is a defenseman, six foot, 168 pounds. He was drafted in the second round of the 2019 NHL draft by the Red Wings, 60th overall. And this year, he was playing on Feriestad BK of the SHL on loan, where he managed to put up 25 points in 52 games played as a defender. That really is impressive, if you ask me. Honestly, the guy is 21 years old, and he really has so much room to grow here. He's playing on the Grand Rapids Griffins of the AHL next year. So it's going to be really exciting to see what he's able to do over there. And ultimately, man, I have to put him up here at number three just because, you know, these defensemen, they're so scarce on this list and I have so many forwards. So when you get a good defenseman, you have to have a little bit more bias there for him. And that's why Johansson is at number three here on this ranking. Moving into the top two now, I have Jonathan Berggren on the Grand Rapids Griffins of the AHL. This guy is 22 years old. He was selected second round, 33rd overall in the 2018 NHL draft by the Red Wings. And this guy in the AHL is an absolute beast. I really think he's ready to make that transition to the NHL level soon. But, you know, if you look at these stats here, he got 64 points in 70 games played, 21 goals, 43 assists on Skellef T, AIK in the SHL. Sorry if I mispronounced that. He got 45 points in 49 games played the year previous. So this guy, he's just a really consistent scorer. And man, if I was the management over in the Red Wings, I'd be bringing this guy up to give him a shot on the Red Wings roster because they really have nothing to lose. I don't think that the Red Wings are ready to make a playoff push anyways next year, despite the accusations that they made. So this is a really low risk, high reward. If he works out, then boom, you have yourself a top six, top nine forward. If not, then yeah, he needs a bit more development. So it's not that big of a risk to bring this guy up and he's not going to be jeopardizing the quality of your lineup. So, you know, I'm all for it. Bring this guy up, see what he can do. So Jonathan Berggren, for now, the second overall pick on this list, but I don't think he'll be a prospect for much longer once he finally gets that shot at the NHL level. And that leaves us with the number one pick on this list. He won't be a prospect for much longer because this guy, he signed with the Red Wings and he is ready to make his debut next year. I have Simon Edvinson. This guy, I really wanted him on the Canucks. I wanted the Canucks to trade up and try and get him or him to fall down uh, to wherever he was getting selected. But no, the Red Wings took him at number six overall. An absolute steal in my mind in the 2021 NHL draft. He's six foot six. 207 pounds he's a left shot defenseman and man the guy is only 19 and he's already proved 
that he can play at that high level. If you look at his stats on Forlunda in the SHL, as a defenseman, 19 points in 44 games played, and that was as like what, like an 18, 17 year old? That's ridiculous. And this guy, he's just so capable. He defends well with his reach. He maintains strong gap control, and I've been watching him in the World Junior Championships this year. And honestly, man, this guy is just such a joy to watch. He's very technically skilled. He has it all. And Red Wings fans, I'd be really excited for this guy to make his debut next year. Him and Sider are going to be a really dynamic duo. It's going to be deadly out there, and it's going to be really exciting to watch. So yeah, that pretty much ends it for this video, guys. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you guys agree with my list, be sure to let me know. And also tell me what you change about it if you do disagree with it. Make sure you subscribe to the channel if you're new around here, like the video, and I'll see you guys all in the next one. Peace and take care.